Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm looking at Kathy Wood's investment in NNDM. RQ bought 1.8 million shares of NNDM. They're a 3D printing company based out of Israel. The company offers its proprietary Dragonfly LDM system, which manufactures frequency antennas, circuit boards, sensors, and molded connected devices. They're in a rapidly growing market and are key enablers of the following industries and businesses. I'm going to geek out a bit in this video and I'm discussing why Kathy Woods might be seeing Nano Dimensions as a phenomenal pick. I'll go over their financials and value this company and tell you what my price target is. So stick around, I think you'll really find this interesting. And if I can ask you for a favor, smash the like button for me because towards the latter half of this video, I'm gonna create a simple discounted cash flow model in Excel and walk you through it, which was part of my job when I was working at one of the hedge funds on Wall Street. Let's get into it. As you can see right here, the stock is currently below $3. The market cap is $162 million. I was gonna say billion, but this is a very small cap stock and it's under $3 right now currently. This morning, I really wanna buy some shares. I may pull the trigger on 1,000 shares because under $3 does seem like a good deal to me. But we really do have to have a discussion here because for starters, I usually never invest in small cap stocks, especially not penny stocks. And this company is a penny stock. It's under $5. It has just 68 employees in fact. October 26th, they announced they're entering into a definitive agreement with investors for the sale of 16.7 million shares of the company's American depository shares to be more specific at a price of $3 per ADS. The gross proceeds of the offering will approximately be $50 million before deducting placement agent fees and other estimated offering expenses. And I almost became an investment banker and those Asian fees can go into the millions of dollars. So NNDM probably only netted $47 million. Nano Dimension said its proceeds from the capital raise will be used for working capital and for other general corporate purposes. The market didn't like that at all because on Friday it was about $4 per share at the close. And then on the Monday opening, it was down 20%. It was about $3.17 on Monday when it opened. And then we're just kind of trying to get back where it was. It was trying, it had a little upward action there at eight and a half percent up. And then overall on the single day, it ended at, it just ended flat. I mean, it just had a whole bunch of consolidation and nothing pretty much happened. And then on Tuesday, the same thing happened. Almost nothing happened because investors weren't sure what's going on because on one side, Kathy Woods is buying this stock. There's a lot of, you know, excitement over her purchasing, but at the same time, Investors just can't wrap their heads around this stock, which I'm gonna get into a lot later when it comes to their financials. And today we're down 7.23% and the stock is touching and flirting with the $3 per share mark. I think this stock is going to have another heavy day of trading today. What baffled me is this stock is tremendously higher on the six month chart. I mean, just look at it. It was about 75 cents just six months ago and now it's $3. So that's a four times multiple on what it was trading at just six months ago. But the one year chart has a slightly different story. The stock is flat on the year. So psychologically, this is an important time for the stock. One thing that I have to mention about the $3 offering, by the way, is it's not completely bad. Let's look at it from a different angle. The first direct offering was $2 per share. The second direct offering offering was $2.30, while the third direct offering is $3. And all of this happened in a span of just five months since May of this year. So who knows, we might see another offering coming in at $4 per share and then a fiver pretty soon, which is part of the reason why my thumbnail says $5 for this stock. I'm going to go over exactly why I think it's $5 later in this video when I go into the financial modeling section, but basically I think this can happen between six to 12 months from today. ARK Invest, by the way, usually talks with company management as a part of their due diligence. So I wanted to bring that up, but I'm not going to say anymore because I'm only spinning facts that are public and I'm only assuming that Kathy Woods and her team knows more information than the public investor knows. However, there's nothing we can do about Kathy Woods knowing more, but it is a good sign to see that she's buying. Let's take a look at their CEO real quick and see what the management is like before I hop into Excel to discuss a simple financial model to estimate NNDM's value. Yoav Stern joined January 2nd of this year. Mr. Stern sounds like NYU Stern where I wanted to go for undergrad, but I went to Drexel University. Anyways, he's a seasoned executive with a proven track record spanning decades in operations role as CEO and chairman, as well as an active hands-on investor in high-tech companies specializing in machine vision, fiber optics, defense tech, communication solutions, aerospace, and homeland security. Boy, 
I wish I kind of had some of those skills, but to be honest, I'm not an expert in any of those fields that I just mentioned, but it's clear that he has a very solid background that's going to be very beneficial for NNDM. Are you guys ready to jump into Excel so I can show you a beautiful financial model showing you exactly why I think NNDM could be worth $5 in the near future? Let's do it. Okay, guys, this is a discounted cash flow model, and I'll explain to you what this is, how it works, and everything that you need to know. A discounted cash flow model essentially it forecasts what revenues will be into the future. That's why it says 2020, 2021, 2022, and so forth, okay? So here on this side, we have revenues for NNDM, okay? And I'll explain to you why I have these assumptions in here in a little bit. We have revenues, we have expenses, we have cash flow, okay? Cost of capital just takes into account how risky a stock is and is the discount rate that we will use for cash flows. It basically discounts cash flows in the future to today's dollars. Okay, no big deal, 7%. Uh, there's a discount factor, and this is less important, but essentially, as you can see, this is 0.93 because it's taking into account this uh, 7%. And as cash flow goes into the future, I mean, it's less valuable. Would you rather a dollar today or a dollar in 10 years? Yeah, I thought so. You'd want a dollar today. Okay. So that's what a discount factor is. And after the discount factor is put into place, we basically have cash flow. And this model adds up all the cash flow and it makes a terminal value. So before I go into why I came up with the terminal value, there's a few things that you have to know. If we go to sheet one, basically what I did was I took 2016 through 2020 for NNDM and I looked at the revenue. So this is what you need to know about my growth assumptions. In 2016, NNDM had $45,000 worth of revenue. And I just went down the list for 2017, 18, 19, and 20. So these are the numbers, right? 5.1 million, $7 million in 2019. And basically I'm factoring in a decline for NNDM revenues because, well, they're being impacted by the whole pandemic. So I'm saying that they're gonna lose 50% of their revenue in 2020. So that is the assumption that I'm using. Now here I made a rate calculation, basically taking in five years worth of growth. So that's why right here it says five, there's no PMT meaning, well, I'm not adding any money and present value was the 45,000 and it grew all the way to 3.5 million, okay? That rate right there is about 139% growth and I'm not gonna use that growth, but I just want you to know what the average growth was and then I'll show you what I actually used. And by the way, just for a little bit more references, Data M Intelligence reported that 3D printing electronics market will grow from basically 600 million to $2.4 billion. So from 2021 to 2025, this market is supposed to quadruple in size. So let's go back to the DCF model. Essentially what I did was I plugged in the $3.5 million, which I just talked about. They're gonna lose half of what they had. And you know how I said they're gonna grow 139%? Well, taking a look at 2021, I essentially put $7 million because, well, 100% of 3.5 million, which is basically a double, is going to be $7 million. So I'm saying that they're gonna double from 2020 to 2021 once things kind of recover or once they you know kind of improve their business because you know they're going through a rough patch but it will recover or it should recover then the next year i'm saying they're going to have a very aggressive growth rate of 175 percent essentially they're going to more than double and that is actually in line with a lot of estimates for what analysts are saying now the next year it's going to slow down it's going to go to 50 percent that's why up here you see 1.5 because I'm saying they're going to grow by 1.5 or by 50% from 2022 levels. So they're going to be $18 million in revenue in 2023 and they're going to grow by 25%. So they're going to stop growing so fast. So as you can see here, 75%, 50%, 25%. And in perpetuity right here, growth rate in perpetuity, I just put a measly 3%. So I'm not being aggressive at all in my assumptions. So I'm expecting their expenses to be about 5 million in 2021, and they're going to go up about 20% in 2022. And the reason why I'm not putting 175% like I did for the revenue is, well, businesses have something called economies of scale and revenues usually grow Grow, but expenses, you know, kind of stay the same slash they grow with revenues, but not as much. And that's called economies of scale. So I'm just putting in 20%, 20%, 20%. So don't get me wrong, expenses are going to grow, but they're not going to grow as aggressively as revenues if they have smart management. Okay, so next next section is cash flow. So yeah, we're going to have a lot of negative cash flow in 2020, but in 2021, they might break a profit. And this is what it's going to continue to look like. So just going down, this is the present value of cash flows. 
And what's happening here is cash flow is increasing, but it's not increasing as much because this discount factor is taking into account that future dollars are worth less today. So $14 million in 2024 is only worth $10 million today. You add up all of these values, plus there is a formula here for perpetuity, and then you add everything up and you get about $368 million. That's because, well, the present value of all the cash flows is this amount, right? And the present value of their whole terminal value, which is a business that's going into perpetuity forever. I mean, businesses last forever. They're an ongoing basis. That's what we learn in accounting classes. So that's what the cash flow is worth in the next few years. Uh, specifically one, two, three, four, and five. And that's the value that we have in perpetuity. Now, if I change this value and we say like, hey, you know, NNDM is gonna grow like gangbusters, it's gonna be 4%. You can see right now, once I enter this in, the um, value will go up significantly. Yes, it went up significantly. So um, I'm just gonna put 3%. I'm gonna be a little bit more on the safe end and that's a, that's a perpetuity rate. So you can be you know, pretty conservative with that because that's going into forever. And a forever value, as you can see, is much higher than um, a present value because this is assuming all cash flows forever being discounted. And um, yeah, so we'll keep it at that. And basically, this is the value that I am expecting NMDM to be worth in the near future. I think that's what it's pretty much worth today. Um, we can also mess around and say, hey, NMDM is kind of risky. They might encounter some trouble. So I can put in 9% for cost of capital and this stock will go down tremendously. But, um, you know, I said seven, I said nine, let's put eight, right? Let's be somewhere in the middle. So let's just call this $295 million. So we can take this amount, we can divide it by the current value of um, NNDM, which is $162 million. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And that's how much upside I think NMDM has. So essentially, if I take 182% and I do equals and I take this percentage and I multiply it by $3, we get about five bucks, okay? All right, so now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually have some fun and we're just gonna experiment with the cash flows just a little bit. So some of you guys will were like, well, hey, Henry, you didn't go up enough with the expenses. Okay, fine. So uh, instead of 1.2, let's say it goes up 1.3. Boom, you see how that stock price falls just a little bit over here? Now, another thing we can do is, hey, Henry, 8%. Eh, I want eight and a half. Okay, guys, here you go, eight and a half. So about $4.72 but hey you know three percent maybe we're a little bit more aggressive so let's put in 3.3 percent as you can see that perpetuity really does make a huge difference but there you go i didn't plan that but it came out to about five bucks per share so that's essentially where i'm getting five dollars per share for nmdm if you like this do let me know i may do more future videos with discounted cash flow analysis so yeah that's what a discounted cash flow model is it takes into account future growth it takes into account expenses it takes into account cost of capital which is how risky a stock is and it basically just comes up with the value. This is a very simplified version. This can get way more complicated. I've seen discounted cash flow models on Wall Street that literally have, you see there's two tabs here. In my scenario, I've literally seen 20 tabs. I've literally made five to 10 tabs myself, not 20. Some of those analysts have been there forever. But if you guys really like this, do let me know and I'll do a lot more videos that have discounted cash flow models. Did you guys like that screen share? Basically, that's how I'm coming up with $5 per share. Did you notice though that I make a lot of assumptions and that's what everybody out here does. Everyone on Wall Street, everyone in school, we all have to make assumptions and humans in general, we have to make assumptions about the market. Most people just slap on a price target, whereas I just broke it down for you. At the end of the day, stocks are based on assumptions, market behaviors, and let's face it, a little bit of luck. But if you did like that, then let me know in the comments below, join Patreon. And if you haven't already, like this video. If you guys like this, I'll make a lot more of these videos breaking down financials, creating simple financial models because I haven't really seen that done on YouTube as much. And it does take some time. It definitely took some time for me, but I'm happy to do it because I think it is very interesting. I'll see you guys in the next video. Give me that fist bump champion and be aggressive in learning, but be safe in investing. See you later. No one ever sees me. See